And if there's one thing that you wanted to see going digital in the financial services space this year, or perhaps into next year, um, what would it be? Anything. Rory, how about we start with you? Oh God, uh, that's that, that's a that's an interesting question. Um, I, I think uh, certainly in terms of uh, you know something around you know pensions would be would be great. You know, being able to kind of you know just figure out you know what you should be investing in, what portfolio you should be investing in, and trying to visualize you know what your future is going to look like. I think I think one of the big challenges that human beings have is seeing where they're going to be in the next twenty or thirty years. And what sort of lifestyle they're going to have, and what their context is going to be, and uh, so I'd like to see something that enables you know human beings to kind of step into that future more, and enable them to sort of predict what that future is going to be. Because I think it's sort of an intangible thing for a lot of human beings, and I think that's one of the biggest challenges financial you know wealth managers have is kind of helping customers to step into their future selves. So that would be an interesting one. Awesome, Niall. What do you think? One thing you'd love to see go digital. Well, I, for me, it's um, when it comes to money, one size doesn't fit all. So hyper personalized using your full financial situation, like we we're talking. I mean, if we could crack that, that would be huge. That, that to me is uh, will be will be skin to that panacea. Will be amazing. I hear you. I want one of those floating ATMs on a drone that when I need cash or something to pay somebody who only take cash, that it'll just drop in front of me. Or they, they, I, I'd love to see that happen. Brian, what do you think? I, I would say. Uh, you need to become a data-centric organization. Look at the data that's out there today. Um, you know, the data has been available through card transactions, bill payments, et cetera, for years. There are organizations out there that will help you harness that data. Companies like Blip out of Philadelphia looks at bill pay data, turns it into actionable insights. That's the kind of behavior we need. And you can't move toward a, a 360 kind of viewpoint without aggregating that data. So true. So true. Corey? Yeah, I'll build on that. Um, maybe it'd be boring, but blocking and tackling, right? It's, you got to combine these systems uh, together so they can actually function and work so we can you know, analyze this data and, and run with it. It's far too siloed and too cumbersome today, so we need to be able to uh, have all these things work together in concert. So boring answer, but it's blocking and tackling and very foundational. I hear you. No, you're so right. I, I'd love to be able to say we just everyone just start over, but you can't because yep. there, there's you know 8 billion people on this planet uh, that all need to be served, you know, financial services, and you can't just turn something off. We've got to keep building. We've got to keep improving. But listen, we're going to close it there, folks. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you to Rory Galvin. Thank you to Brian Clodgett. Thank you, Niall Toomey. And thank you, Corey Hapricorn, for joining us today. This has been a fascinating discussion, very insightful. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to just get in touch. Um, you can get in touch with me, Pete, at NoriaVentures.com. Um, I think there is a email in the registration page on the event page as well. Um, and I will direct the questions and funnel them through. Uh, everybody uh, is on LinkedIn. Most folks are on Twitter. So you can get in touch with folks that way if you want to have further conversations with all of them, which I hope you do. So thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. 